These days, it seems like there's a new electric car launched almost every week of the year. But in the world of motorsport, battery power is still in its infancy. Yes, Formula E continues to grow in popularity, especially with manufacturers who want to be seen to be clean. But it still hasn't quite won over die-hard motorsport fans with its tight circuits and energy-saving driving style. But if there's one formula I thought would always be suited to battery power, it's Rallycross. And that's a reality now. But before that, a quick history lesson. Believe it or not, Rallycross was invented in the 60s for a British TV show called World of Sport, quickly becoming a staple of Saturday afternoon telly. Held half on tarmac, half on dirt, it combines the speed of circuit racing with the rough and tumble of rallying. Back in the day, all sorts of machines mucked in including fearsome Group B cars after they were banned from the World Rally Championship. Today, the top tier, now sanctioned by the FIA, takes the sort of super minis you'd find in your local supermarket car park and turns them into 600 horsepower all-wheel drive animals. Races are mad, bruising battles in which every driver must complete one choker lap using an extended bit of track where races are often won or lost. Oh, and each race is only five minutes long, which brings me back to my original theory and the electric car I've come to drive. Project E has been created by IMG, the promoters, and Austrian company Star, who built and developed this first prototype based on a Ford Fiesta. But you can buy their powertrain kit and build it into any body shell you want. With that kit, you get a big 420 volt battery that fills most of the passenger seat floor. You get two transmissions, one at the front, one at the rear, both with mechanical differentials. You get one 150 watt motor at the front and two 150 watt motors at the back, giving a total of 450 watts, which is the equivalent to just over 600 horsepower. There's actually no connection between the front and the rear. Instead, there's one central vehicle control unit which manages seven other major control units which sort out things like the torque split front and rear, the cooling of the car, the battery regeneration um, and all sorts of other things. I think it's time I got behind the wheel. Lined up five wide for the heats, the start is all important in Rallycross. And of course this, as we keep on getting told, is where electricity excels. No gears to change, no clutch. I just pull the handbrake, press the launch button, take as much throttle as I dare, wait for the lights to change. I go! If you get the first corner in the lead, it's a huge advantage. In other words, it would comfortably beat a Formula One car off the line and then, for good measure, kick a whole lot of dirt into its face. Oh God, loose, gravel, gravel, loose. There's hardly time to think what you're doing. These, these electric cars with a 600 horsepower. They've already got the same power as the 600 horsepower petrol cars. Oh, 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 it really is a ferocious experience. Of course, electric motors give you instant torque, and this thing just keeps dishing it out, all 1,100 newton meters of it. And who says EVs are too quiet? I mean, just listen to it. The thing is high voltage rock and roll. Best of all, this is clean, green, guilt-free speed. Oh, oh, that works, that works very well. But there is a slight catch. All this acceleration absolutely hammers the battery life. No big deal with such short races, but with several heats a day and a quick turnaround between each one, you're going to need a seriously fast charger. Thankfully, they've thought of that. 
Rather than plugging it in, the whole battery pack can be removed and replaced in just 15 minutes. There are a lot of other upsides to battery power as well. The cars are cheaper to build and easier to maintain than their petrol counterparts and cost about half as much to run. Plus, Stard's platform allows all sorts of e-motors to be installed so manufacturers can use their own electric power plants while the electronic control units referee power outputs to keep the racing fair. All of which means there's less time in the pits and more time on the track. Sports in Europe! Yeah!